I co-founded Vibrant Planet. Um, the name Vibrant Planet is basically the end goal. And we are working on building a technology platform that uses really advanced AI and machine learning to map forests at very fine scale and then pinpoint where we need to go to restore forests um, in order to um, basically avoid the most losses from, from Megafire and also enhance the most ecosystem services benefit. Megafire is a fire that is 100,000 acres or more and importantly also has really profound ecosystem and human impact. So we're seeing them more and more around the globe for a number of reasons. I wish that people knew that fire adapted forests, which is about 53% of land on earth, actually need fire in order to regenerate. It's how they cycle carbon. It's how they cycle nutrients. It's how they get to the right number of trees per acre. So a number of forests worldwide have two to 10 times the number of trees that they should have. And then because we have removed fire, we've gotten really, really good at suppressing fire. We've got all this kindling that has built up under the forest canopy. And then you add climate change to the mix and all of that kindling and the forest themselves are extremely dry. So what happens when a, when a fire actually sparks now, uh, there's all these ladder fuels, they're called, where the fire can basically climb from the forest floor and move up into the canopy. And once you have a canopy fire, you're in big trouble. And, um, and so now forests are really exploding on us and they're becoming net carbon emitters and, and we're losing that, that massive carbon sink that they can be. I also wish that people knew how much is at stake in this problem. So 70% of our water supply comes from forests. It originates in forests. It moves through forests. 80% of terrestrial biodiversity is residing in forests. We humans forget that we, are, we need other species to actually survive ourselves. And they are also storing about a third of our carbon emissions every year. So if we, if we lose them, we, we are in really big trouble. If fires are perceived as negative, because we have conditions now that make the fires really, really big. But in the old days, fire would mostly stay on the ground and it would play this really regenerative role. So cleansing the forest floor of down branches and leaves and, and needles in a pine forest. And often um, fire adapted species actually need good fire to regenerate. So pine cones are these little fireballs. They're round and they're covered in flammable sap so that they, they catch fire, they want fire, and then they roll around and clean the forest floor. And then the mother tree's seeds can actually come down and find soil to plant in. Without that, they can't actually reseed. So the whole system was adapted. It basically grew up with fire. It, 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 the whole thing is adapted. And so we've, we, we've had a 100% fire suppression policy in the United States and many, many other places. So the second a fire sparks, we put it out. And that is now really creating problems because we've got all these fuel buildups and, and all that kindling and too many trees per acre that would have been culled down by natural fire regimes running through, the, running through these forests. So we have invested an incredible amount of time in a very, very big team and a lot of venture capital in building our system to scale globally to, to that 53% of land on earth that needs a system like this to pinpoint where we, where we put treatments to actually reduce fuels, get more of a natural forest structure back so that forests can make it through climate change and then help us make it through climate change. So cracking the, that, that is an incredibly difficult scientific and technical problem. So we have some of the most advanced machine learning engineers on earth paired with the most advanced forest ecologists, um, biodiversity scientists, hydrologists, vegetation and climate modelers um, to, to basically solve this problem and map these, these forests and keep those maps current at a very, very fine scale so we can see individual trees in three dimensions and basically mimic walking around hundreds and hundreds of millions of acres. Actually, worldwide, it's 20 billion acres um, so that we can, we can look across all that acreage run risk maps, that, which our team Pyrologics creates, so we can see where are all the values in a landscape, both built assets as well as all those ecological services like carbon, carbon sinks, water reliability, biodiversity, recreation areas, where are all those values at risk so that we can then basically pinpoint where do we need to put boots on the ground and also financial resources to, to restore those lands and, 
And again, it's all about prioritization now. So we have to figure out what to do in what order so that we can save the most critically at risk places uh, first and then and then figure out where to go from there. So if you think about where we've heard about big fires, so across the Western US, California, um, this is hitting faster. It's a, climate change is hitting their earliest and they've got a, a, a very big problem with, with forest fuels. Um, you think about Australia, you think about Mediterranean Europe, um, France had the biggest fire they've ever, they have ever had last year. Greece had horrific fires this year. Portugal burns every year. Um, but there's also surprising places like part, part of uh, Asia is fire adapted. So Cambodia and several other places down in Latin America, places like Chile. Um, Chile had a horrible fire season this year. So it's really throughout the world. So our technology also helps basically forecast or predict where do we need what types of workers with what skill sets where. It also uh, forecasts how much biomass of what type is going to come out where. And so our goal is to really build a, a robust, vibrant restoration economy where we we can basically help with the workforce development planning. So how do we recruit and inspire thousands and thousands of young people into jobs in forestry, science, technology, like I do. Um, and then also, like, there's a ton of work in forests on the ground to actually mechanically remove fire. Being a burn boss would be one of the coolest jobs on earth. So how do we make sure kids know about about these jobs and 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 how how needed they are? And then there's a, a ton of climate smart biomass industries where we can actually utilize. We have to remove trees sometimes before we put beneficial fire back on the land in order to save forests. So when we remove some of those fuels, it's, it's basically a lot of small, not not super high value wood or branches and just small stuff that doesn't really have a market. And so we're really passionate about things like biochar. We could basically get rid of fracked gas. And there's a lot of goals that utilities have to um, create sustainable methane, sustainable natural gas and hazardous tree waste should be one of one of the one of the fuels for that or one of the one of the feeder industries for that. So we can basically help with the upfront planning on where companies like PG and E can invest and where they can place gasification plants to incinerate trees. There's no carbon emissions and then they can create syn gas and displace fracking ga fracked gas and they can also produce biochar, which is an awesome, awesome soil additive for ag. So very passionate about that. So, I mean, really the goal in the next five, 10 years is to build a, a very big, vibrant restoration economy where lots of people are working on this problem.